Hey, welcome to another episode of Sevenfold Design Technology, where we unlock your creativity through the power of design technology and architecture. I'm Tim Halverson, and today we're talking Rhino, where we're gonna be doing solid closed poly surfaces that you've been using those Boolean operations that are so beautiful, you can get so many good results. And we're talking about using the split component. Now, there's a specific workflow that I use every single day to make solid closed poly surfaces. And I guarantee if you haven't gotten exposed to this already, it's gonna suit you so well in all of your modeling moving forward. So if you're as excited as I am to get into this content, go ahead and open up Rhino and I will see you inside. Hi everyone, welcome into Rhino. We've gone ahead and launched up a fresh session. And to do this, I'm just going to demonstrate and illustrate by just making a quick sphere here. I'm going to model that in place. Turn off the branding here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just grab a surf, a rectangle just to show how we're going to split this up. It could be any solid geometry and any surface. It doesn't have to be solid either. Um, it could be a just surface, but just to demonstrate, I'm going to go ahead and rebuild this rectangle. Four and four is fine with weights of three on the U and V direction. And then if I hit F10, turn on the control points, and I can just select one, type cell U to select the U direction. And then with the gumball turned on right here, that one more time, cell U, gumball turned on, I can just drag that up and select this one. It's spacebar to repeat cell U and just drag that down. And that's just gonna create whatever shape I want to, to perform the split. Now I'm gonna select the object I wish to split and run split, hit there, run split. And I'm gonna use this object to split it with, hit spacebar to accept it. Now at this point, um, there's a bunch of different ways you can go about this, but sometimes I'm usually gonna hold control and select the object I wanna keep and delete the unnecessary things I don't want to keep. But in this case, I do want to keep both of them. I'm just going to leave it alone. And then I'm going to reverse that process by selecting this surface that's just was used to split. I'm going to go ahead and split that by typing in split. And then using, I'll just use the top one to be the cutting object. Hit spacebar to accept that. And then I want to keep that surface in there. So I'm going to hold control and select that to keep it and then delete now what that just did is it basically um, it basically created a surface in there, and I'm gonna go ahead and join that to create a closed poly surface right here, and I can go ahead and move that by some distance. Um, I like to do specific distances, and then if I wanted to get that back. Um, I could also control shift click that surface and control shift click that surface. Let me do my specified distance. I'm just gonna alt click a copy, which is negative 36, and I did five before that, so negative 41. And then I'm gonna type flip and shift select that and type control J to join. And now we've got two closed poly surfaces. So now I can go back and I can start to do other um, Boolean operations. So if I wanna do something like this, you know, whatever I want, I can start to carve that and shape that um, however I want, you know? And I can um, do like a Boolean difference and select from those to subtract that. Start to carve that out. Um, you can get creative with how you want to do this. Um, there's there's other things too where I could, you know, run Boolean operations once it's closed. But I think what what's a common creating like holes, for example, uh, like for example, if I wanted to come in here and go to C plane and set it to the surface, I could set it to the surface here. And if I want to turn that on real quick, 
Oh, it's just hidden behind everything. I'm um, not going to worry about that right now, but you can see my seaplane is on the surface right there. And then I could, um, I can just do like a rectangle. And I could do a three point actually. And I could say, give it, um, you know, one inch this is a really big, um, uh, maybe do 12, 12 inches. And then I want to do 36, like a window. And then I could round that. So if it's 12 inches, um, I could just do the fillet right here and the fillet radius being uh, six inches. Gonna basically make a perfect circle there that's 12 inches wide. And I can just rerun that on these two. Now I've got that pill shape and then I can do extrude curve which is going to be relative to the C plane that I just made. And if I just don't use solid, um, delete input, no, that's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and run this all the way through my geometry. Now this is a very common example because we've got a hollow piece of geometry working with a solid. All right. So what I can do is I can say, take this, and split that with this, all right? And then I wanna keep the solid, but I wanna delete the surfaces that I just intersected with. So I wanna delete those to hollow it out, delete that. And then I also want to reverse that. So I'm gonna split this and use this as the cutting object. And I wanna keep the inside object. So there's an inside object in there. And delete the rest of it. Now, what we have is we've actually carved out that inner tube sorts that was in there. And if I join that, now it's a solid closed poly surface right here. And it's hollowed out. So that could be like a window. Um, and this doesn't depend on having um, closed poly surfaces to begin with. So you can just have any surface, any curve, and you're going to be able to do this method. And so that's going to give you a lot of flexibility. I realize you can do a lot of these similar moves if you have closed poly surfaces, but this is great because you can work from abstract geometry such as curves and still end up with solid closed poly surfaces. And this is um, Again, there's just like a million applications for this workflow. Um, I'm really curious how you're using it. And if you've never heard of this before, um, glad I could expose you to it because it's there's there's just a million different ways you can be using this. So split one, split two, join them back together, get solid uh, close poly surfaces. And Bob's your uncle. <laughs> All right, guys, that's all I have for this one. I appreciate you tuning in. And if you enjoyed it, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Subscribe. We're going to be posting content regularly. And leave a comment. What did you learn? And what are you hoping to make next with this workflow? All right, until next time, stay creative and curious, my friends. And we'll see you in the next one.